But let's jump right into the 1-1, one, one, which is pretty much synonymous to Saquon Barkley. I think in any format that you're going with, I think that's your that's going to be your consensus 1-1 one, one right now. We're talking about rookie running back specifically. Um, but Saquon is, there's, I mean, people are giving up their entire team to just have a chance at rostering this guy, which I would like to uh, quickly throw a thing in there. He's from Whitehall, Pennsylvania. <laughs> My high school used to play Saquon Barkley. Yeah. The old Zephyrs. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I love that. Should dig up some stats. I'm, I'm all in. Well, he's originally from New York. Moved to, uh, That's a bummer. Moved to Whitehall, Pennsylvania, which I'm from Easton, Pennsylvania. Same conference. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was Whitehall has their ups and downs. They're usually down. But when Saquon was there, he was probably up whew, way up. <laughs> Still only a four-star recruit. Idiots. <laughs> Parents are probably idiots. <laughs> of the recruiters, not Saquon. Right. Right. <laughs> Good family. Actually, I don't know that. But So some people really want to argue that the real 1-1 one, one is Darius Geis. So I'm so glad I have the 1-2 because yeah. the what the real 1-1 one, one is, is at the 1-2. It's Darius Geis. Yeah. What do you guys think about that? I mean, I like Darius Geis as much as the next guy, but you can't be getting cute here. Like Saquon Barkley could easily be a top 10 dynasty startup pick next year and i mean he just the notes i have about his about watching his tape is like whoa geez what did i just see jump like, jehoshaphat's batman <laughs> it's just crazy the like i mean we don't have to break him down but i mean it's just he caught 54 balls last year on top of all the amazing feats at, at running back well so i mean sometimes he presses a little too hard and he tries too much and mm. just stop it he's the one one yeah it's consensus there's no reason to get cute and do anything else it's the one one i don't feel like we need to spend a ton of time in here debating this or talking about or giving a breakdown on saquon i know we haven't done so for saquon or really the top four but yeah i mean i do have like this terrible gut-wrenching feeling that he might he might he's probably gonna be a brown when it's all said and done they do have two picks in the top four so i could well, definitely just see. plummet him right out of the top 10 i mean I, I don't think it really changed anything for me like i'm still gonna take him one overall well the people who say that you shouldn't draft running backs in in the first round or whatever are, are gonna lose their shit but that's fine with me you guys keep losing your shit i'll i'll keep taking a gu- like Nobody knows what's going to happen in the first round. There's a million busts every year. If a guy looks like he could possibly be a generational talent, why not take a stab on him? And if he could be your cornerstone running back for the next six, seven, ten years, then Absolutely. what are you really losing here? Well, you, some people are saying he's the best running back they've seen since Adrian Peterson. I mean, my, my thing about Saquon is the kick returns. I mean, to do 225, 230 pounds, wherever you see him listed – to do the things that he's doing as a running back and catching the ball out of the backfield and all that stuff. I mean, that's, that's like, it's, it's one, one stuff, but then you give the 230 pound man a kickoff return and he goes a yeah. hundred yards with it several times in the season. That's that. I, I just think that against big opponents when right. you couldn't really get much else rolling exactly. and they still decided to kick it to him and that, he's still doing his thing. Is that, it? that's, that's just, that's it's, different. It's, it's crazy different. that a dude this big can move the way he does. It's insane. That's he's what just, I'm saying. It's man. amazing. And he is a great kid. Um, he, he wants to buy his mom a house. He's got a good family. Like you were saying, you weren't sure. I looked a little bit into that. He's just ready to buy his mom a house. Yeah. Like, I mean, all right. Love all that these, sentiment. Love that sure. sentiment out of him. It, for, for everything that, that we all think we know about Saquon, he is a good kid, and he's got his head on right. And he's probably, they every pre-draft and every – uh, ranking system I saw all through college this year. He was kind of the number one prospect, even atop the quarterbacks and stuff like that. So, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think you can go wrong taking Sa- Saquon one one in any format. And I think what Jay Wayne said, he could be a number one pick next year. I think the sparkle on him and just the name value that he's basically the cachet, the cachet he's developed in the last two years at Penn State. I believe that if in some startup drafts he'll go in that. He'll go in that late first round of a startup without playing a game. I, um, you know, Zeke Elliott did it. Todd Gurley did it, and the the Leonard Fournette was probably pretty close, right? And he was, and the 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 last couple of years between Leonard Fournette and and well, last year's running back spoiled us. They were all good, right? But the the Ezekiel Elliott class and the Todd Gurley class, those two cats changed people's teams picking it. Front end of the rookie draft, sure. And I, Saquon is you. Uh, you got to take a stab. Like you said, don't get cute. Guys has his own good measures. 
but Barkley is Barkley, and you got I think you got to grab him, and I, I think you'd be silly not to. Dude, I, power I, cleans four hundred five pounds, <laughs> right? Ridiculous. And he returns kickoffs. <laughs> like, we're, we're all in the and he squats a, a ridiculous amount, like six hundred fifty yeah. pounds. <laughs> yeah, which I mean, obviously it's not the be all end all, but no, but he can well, pick up but, a bus. But you know, not like, only not <laughs> only does he do all that, is is that that equates to being absolutely ridiculous on the field, and he's got the three phases of the game that everybody wants. Um, and all that kind of stuff. So I don't think we need to spend too much time here on Saquon. Great guy. Take he's your, hurdled take every him, player in FBS that he's right. played. Take, your, take him as the 1-1 one, one and, yeah. and be super stoked that even if you had the shittiest team for the last two years that your franchise just got turned around. And you could just have somebody fun to pull for. Right. And, yeah. Well, we've seen what these elite running backs can do. They pretty much score 100 more points than anybody else in fantasy, which Saquon has just as good a chance as any of these backs to do so. Yeah. So. Unless he's a Brown, but whatever. Even if he is a Brown, man, that's a good offensive line. They, they'll say they got Kirk Cousins. They got a ton of cap room. Could. <clears throat> got this, some wide receiver weapons. Th- it's got to turn around at Trent, some point. Trent Richardson did the, the, the first act of Trent Richardson as sure. a Brown. He, sure. he took over the Dynasty community as and a Crowell Brown. And Crowell and Duke were both startable this year, so it wouldn't be the worst. Yeah, Duke's like be, a low-end RB1. Duke yeah. was like the RB9 in PPR. Or no, he was, uh, he was top 12. He was, yeah. he was an RB1. He might have been RB9. Yeah. Full point PPR. That's well, what we're obviously. usually talking about well, here. Well, if you're not, give it the times. I know. So 1-1, one, one, consensus, Saquon. Barkley. Two, I think it's pretty much consensus, Geis. Yeah. Um, well, so much force and power combined with the lateral ability. I'm all about some Geis. Sure. sure. Tons of speed to go with all that. Got to go chalk here. There's a, they, and, and sometimes the last, like I mentioned before, the last couple seasons, it was you, you, there's, the, these guys are chalk for a reason. They stand out above the rest. That Darius Geis is if he's earned himself a conversation to be compared to Barkley, good for him. Right, you and he's I mean? earned. He, a lot of people, when especially when Fournette was there last year, was like, "Oh, he's the better back. Just wait till next year. He's the better guy." Now it's unfortunate he did have a little bit of injuries that he was battling through in seventeen, but the sixteen tape is is pretty fun to watch. The seventeen tape has you know ebbs and flows of him being healthy and not healthy but the same thing happened to Fournette right Fournette's 15 tape was ridiculous and his 16 was a little nicked up and it's like well as he's trying to just stay out and you know not get hurt for the for the paychecks and and he played well banged up I mean he he was putting up numbers he dealt with with a knee and a leg injury early in the season he sat out versus Troy um, and I think he he probably lost a little bit of that lateral quickness uh, to his game so he was just basically banging his way and speed right so he was just banging his way to yards, sure, because his 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 you know legs weren't weren't right, um, but then he got healthier as the year went on and culminated. I think it was like Ole Miss or something where he had you know 167 right, yeah, yards and the announcer finally was like, looked like the there was like some, first time he yeah. said he's felt the best that he had in a long time and um, I mean he just he plays so mean like he he's a great banger. He is only 215 pounds. Like I don't know, like he's just he's I'm so okay determined. With that. That's fine with me. Yeah, um, there's a lot of stats that go behind 215 pounds being like the weight for yeah. superstar and longevity and all that good stuff. Yeah. Now, he, you know, l- let me just back up to Saquon and his weight, the Trent Richardson syndrome and the Eddie Lacy syndrome. I believe that Saquon can transcend and keep keep from yeah. falling into well, that. It's all in his legs. Love. He's got tree trunk legs. Exactly. There. Exactly. But those, horse legs. Those tree trunk legs have fallen into burger love the last couple of big <laughs> solid running backs. True. It is true. I'm just saying. Well, I'm just saying. But but Trent Richardson's legs were never that big. It was more around Eddie Lacy midsection the, than it listen, was his legs. But <clears throat> real, I don't want to get too side crack off of, off of guys here. But like, he's a workout warrior like that's what he does that's what he wants to do he's not gonna he's not gonna get paid and get get fat and get get overweight just, so. and just throwing it out there as a positive for guys he's not he's not in that mold of maybe a couple burgers messes him no up, not at all him off no he's he's lean for 215 and, and mean like and i think i think it's fair to call him an underrated pass catcher um he didn't have too many opportunities they're not completing a whole bunch of balls there but I mean, when do they? He only had 32 yeah. receptions over his three-year career. That was but more I mean, than all the wide receivers. Yeah, <laughs> I never really saw him drop anything, and for the most part, it was pretty handsy. So maybe he's not a quote pass catcher, but he could he can catch passes. So. And also the the story behind this guy, oh he's, God, a, he's right? a great guy to root for. You got to be wanting to root for guys. And I don't, yeah. don't mean to take anything away from him when I was mocking those people saying, "Well, the real one ones at one too." But yeah. Just saying, don't get cute. We're not trying to put guys down at all. Barkley, I'd right. rather have Barkley, but guys, yeah, I mean, his dad was like shot at five years old, and he's had to like, I mean, I can't imagine what that'd be like. You're just old enough as a kid to really know what's going on and yeah. to be able to. He said that one of the last things he ever really told his dad was that he was going to become a running back at LSU. 
Oh, like, that's cool. I'm glad I didn't make any promises like that as a kid. Like I'm sure I told plenty of people I was going to play in the NBA, but like that soon <laughs> faded. I can't, I can't own up and keep those promises. Like this beast of a monster. True. Can. I was supposed to play basketball at Duke. That did not work out. Yeah. So I mean, he he's he's playing out there for his family and for his mom and his brother, and he he's got some easy stuff guy that, to root for. Yeah. I mean, and 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 it's it's not surprising to see how successful he is, and he's just going to continue to be successful. I was super pumped to take him at one two. For sure, sure, absolutely. But I don't. I don't think we need. Again, I don't think we need to spend a ton of time evaluating this guy. We've kind of the whole time we were breaking down running backs and giving you the full breakdown on these guys. We have kind of said, you know, the the top four are kind of chalk and in really whatever order you want. But the one two to me are are pretty uh, solidified. Yeah, and we are talking running backs here, so we're not going to blend in the wide receivers as we go down this list. But and when we get into that later on in, in future uh, podcasts here, the for me, one two is always going to be a running back. It, I, I mean, I don't think there's any chance between the at least the first four that I'm not. I'm just all running backs. I don't yeah. even. I haven't gotten too much into the receiver breakdown. Yeah, but I, I mean, mean I, I like Josh Sutton or Cord, Cortland, Cortland Sutton, Sutton and, and uh, Washington James Washington. I do too. Super a I, lot. I, but I do too. But I'm not taking him in then the top four. Probably I don't. I don't. I completely agree with that. And obviously, if you've been listening to us any time at all, I'm going to be leaning running back heavy. It's running back, running back, running back, running back, running back, running back. And then when you're done with that, you take more running backs, running backs, running backs, running backs, especially in rookie drafts. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the running back is back. I mean, like it, it was a shifting to a passing league. And now these like last couple of classes have just infiltrated this talent in the NFL. And like. Yeah, and most teams want like two guys that they can, and, and some right. of them can support two guys, and more and more teams are supporting well, two we guys. Were just, we were just talking about this off air about how the top end RBs score a hundred more points than sure than you, the you know. the the Todd Gurley lightning in the bottle this year was a hundred points better than any wide receiver. The David Johnson, David Johnson got the hurt. year before, and I mean let me, Le'Veon Bell's been on those those heels the last two years, so let me just take not just call out singular running backs here for who scored the most. Le'Veon's right behind them. But a quick stat is 17 points or more per game. There's eight running backs last year that averaged 17 or more points per game. There's four wide receivers. So it is and a pass. And David Johnson was missing all year. And David so Johnson's not in that list. pretty much just chalk list. up a ninth. Exactly. Yeah. And David Johnson's not in that Ezekiel list. Ezekiel Elliott also didn't play uh, he, but no, he's, every he was, single. But he, he was, was one 20, of those guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, 20 points per game when the ones he got. But Dalvin Cook was right there on the edge and only played a couple games. He probably would have averaged more. So the point of that is, is it still is a passing league. None of that changes. But like Jay Wayne mentioned there, the talent and all. And I believe that a lot of this, the the running backs in the last couple of years, they're going through high school systems that are more spread for right. the most part. They're getting they're getting more of the passing game on their plate getting to college. And then when you get to college, there's hardly any Alabamas out there. And almost all these dudes we're going to talk about today can can catch. Like Yeah, it's a it's an ability, it's a trait that they it's possess. It's just now becoming right. the norm that so, these dudes can catch. Well, again, like we were talking about off air, like basically the the running backs just like you were saying about how the high school things like the systems change and it's much exactly. more adept to what's going on eating all, regimens and right, training all regimens. that plays into it but then these these guys who are like your freak athletes basically like when you're younger like the pitcher for your team is yep. the best player and he's the also the best hitter or, yeah right yeah exactly but these guys now that are these freak athletes they're pretty much all i i in my opinion be, are gonna be a little bit more slotted towards the running back position in football because you can they can do everything a running back's doing it or a wide receiver's doing it and you can hand it to them exactly. 20 times a That's, game. Well, they've always the best the best athlete on the field has always been the running back, but Sometimes the running back quarterback. But well, yeah, both. It, well, because that's the easiest, quickest way to get the ball in his hands to be the quarterback. But the second easiest guy on the field to get the ball to is the running back because they hand it to him. And so that the 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 running backs in the high school, college, they're, they're they're seeing more of it. But the moral of the story, I mean, it's a superficial break at 17 points a game. If you go down to 16 points a game, it's 10 running backs and eight wide receivers. So it sounded better. It's a better sounding stat if I went up to mm. 17 for and eight to four. You can bend stats in any which way you want. Exactly. To sound so I just like, wanted to right. bring that to super. Official break at six to between sixteen and seventeen is that, but the reason I wanted to just bring that part up is we're we're talking rookies and running backs and all this kind of stuff. But when you do get into your rookie draft, you're trying to just keep there's we say this a lot and we've said it a ton. There's catches everywhere in the NFL. You can always find wide receivers to make catches. Casey and I just won a championship in the FFPC league, FFPC league, and our best wide receiver. We had two wide receivers. We had Larry Fitzgerald and Jarvis Landry. No, no, not not that team. Oh, Larry, oh, oh. Larry Fitzgerald and Marquise Lee. And on our bench was was super bust. We're just Dante, winning championships we, everywhere. I don't know what teams. Da, Dante Moncrief and um, Tyrell Williams. 
But, you know, just couldn't even start them all year long. But we started four running backs. Point of the story is when you get a running back that's getting touches, he gets them more consistently. Even you got a, might, you might have a good wide receiver, but they still have their four for 40 games and their five for 50s. But when you get a good running back that's carrying the rock, getting the hand, ball handed to him 15, 20 times a game and catching five or six passes a game, you just can't, can't beat that. Yeah, well, I mean – we're back in full swing. There's three of us here. You know, Big Co's back. We've gotten through two guys. It's time to take a break. Yeah, that's we'll, how we roll. We'll come back with, uh, with, the, with the next uh, two, two guys on the list and, and round out the top four. All right, let's roll back into it. We're going to get into the third uh, running back on our rookie rankings here. Um, got a little bit of a difference in opinion here. I got somebody different than Jay Wayne. Um, but before we do that, you can hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual tags. You can hit me up at IMC Myers. You can hit Jay Wayne up at Jay Wayne's World. You can hit Big Co up at Dynasty Big Co. <laughs> Had to take a second there. It's been a little while. Yeah. Um, it's been a while. But let's get back into it since I said I'm sorry. <laughs> since I got to F things up again. Whatever. Anyway, stained. Like all right. So I, I think. Always do. <laughs> Is that puddle of mud? No, it's stained. Stain? Similar. Whatever. Puddle of no- nickel tantric back saliva stain. <laughs> all right. Hey, so I, I think learned how to shoot pool with all that music. I, I think that music gets me pumped on a pool table. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's tough. Anybody out there, Big Co will play you for whatever you want in pool. Yeah, but he's going to fake it the first game you play, <laughs> and then he's about to ball out the Double second down. Game. I mean, what what else are you doing if you really don't have confidence in your? If you have confidence in yourself, why would you not be? Got to be sandbagging. That's it. <laughs> that's it. All right. So I think the Number next three. the next two guys, regardless of which order you have them in, are probably going to be Georgia backs, as far as this room's concerned, um, for sure. So I'll let I'll let Jay Wayne go because I think his guy is probably a little bit more consensus at three than than my guy. Who who you got? Oh man, I'm about to take these Sony Michelle plums to farmers market. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the difference is 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 competitive in the room and hey. That plum looks good. You, can I trade it for your Twinkie? No, these are my plums. <laughs> these are my Sony Michelle plums. Which, which is fine. Listen, if wh- wh- whoever you, if I have one three or one four, I'm not upset about either guy th- that I have to take here. Really, part of me would like to have one four so I don't have to make the decision. But the other part of me, I would just want one three so I can go ahead and grab Sony. But, but I mean, I'll, let me. So let me go but in my. Why? De- defense of uh sony here i mean like the dude's just so silky smooth he is like the way he moves is flawless he's he has basically this, a beyonce song he woke up like this he's got this like drag step that i think he is woke just up like this. so good but then there's also an element of power to his game if he needs Absolutely. to lower the shoulder he will he's amazing in space he does an awesome job of like showing you acceleration in one direction just to break you down and cut back in the other direction He's got great field awareness, awareness. awareness. He's got fleet, great field awareness to go with great body control. He shows patience behind the line of scrimmage to let his blocks set up. He's good at using his blocks in the open field, but he knows when he's about to get tackled, and he'll lower his shoulder just to squeeze a few more yards out. He is 215 pounds. Which is probably my favorite part about him, and when you watch the tape, <clears throat> I feel like that really jumps on the page at you. Like yeah. It's not something that you really – pegged him for right but when you watch it like there's you could almost make a case that like he runs a little bit more of like the dive kind of game and the and like the delayed the delayed draw and all that kind of stuff than than chubb actually does in 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 what they do and a lot of the times you see michelle kind of going up the middle and using that patience like you saw to kind of pick and choose which which hole he wants to drive through and he finishes runs extremely well yeah i love it um and i'm I'm gonna say this about Ronald Jones a little bit later, but if the defense makes any kind of mistake, this guy is gone. You are going to pay for your sins. It's Sunday, but even Jesus can't save you from Sony Michelle capitalizing on any type of mistake you're about to make. And I just, I love that ability in a dude when you have this game breaking skill to go along with so many other elements to your game. Um, I mean, he's got a 50, he's basically got a 50 50 shot of converting third and 20. I mean, just right. like ask Alabama. Right. That that run is absurd. When you're just like basically just trying to get a few yards to make your punt easier and you hand a delayed draw off to your running back and he picks up the first down on third and extra long. He's just a special kind of guy. I think he's very solid in the receiving game. He had 64 catches in his career. Only nine last year, but he had 22 and 26 respectively the years before that. Um, I do like him in pass protection. Is he perfect? No. 
but he looked very good at times. Um, well, he looked, he's, he's comfortable in the third down role for yeah. sure. That's kind of what his MO has been. That's kind of what he's done at Georgia if Chubb's healthy. Um, so abs- he, he, he fits right into that, and I think he can do – the first he can handle the one and two down roll if if need be. Well, there were no targets to go around for the running backs in that Georgia offense this year. Starting no. quarterback, yeah. starting quarterback got hurt week one. The, the freshman comes in, from, Jake Fromm, Steve he comes Fon. in and he, and he just crushes it all year long for a freshman. You know, carrying that, helping that. The, there wasn't a whole lot of checkdowns to the running backs to go around. Regardless, DeAndre Swift had had seventeen receptions, and I think that led the team in running back catches. Yeah. Which, which very well could be the quote unquote as as it goes, you know, the best Georgia running back. It that's, always that's, is. It's the always the next guy, always guy the best, every yeah. time. But but I heard Tim Tebow say it, so it must be real. Mm. He knows Jesus. So <laughs> personally, <laughs> um, back to that pass protection, like in the in the championship game, Bama was throwing all kinds of various stunts and blitzes at him, and he was pretty much holding his own. So like I, I do yeah, think he can succeed. A, a large argument for him in that Georgia game or in that Alabama game, why they didn't give it to him more because Chubb was rendered useless, at least. Yeah. To poor outside. guy. Yeah. Um, he just he looks bigger and faster than everyone else on the field, and it's just so evident to see, to see. He's he's a good like his good is great. Like when he's at his best, it's phenomenal and it's game breaking. Um, and then I love I love who he is off the field. He's a super smart kid. He hates distractions. He keeps his head down and puts in work. When he was in high school, I think both like both of his parents lost their jobs or something, and so he got them a job at the high school that he was playing football for. His mom was in the cafeteria, and his dad was working in maintenance. And he talked about having to see his parents working really hard like back in the hot kitchen and picking up trash and stuff and he's he's in school there's no way he's going to be acting up or doing anything wrong like he's he's in this for his family he sees football as an out the wherewithal from a kid to to put his parents in that in that situation is sure phenomenal yeah like that, what were you thinking about when you were in not that right, right. not know? having to get my parents a job that's for sure and so you know, he, he finished with like a 3.8 GPA in, in high school. And then he, he carries this on. He, he, he thinks of football as his way to improve everyone's life around him. And he is working for that. And he is working nonstop at that. And when you put, when you put like, he's similar to Geist. Like when you, when, when these guys have to earn everything they've ever gotten and like their families are their motivation and you combine that with talent, like it's just scary where it could go. Absolutely. And so I'm, I'm all in on Sony Michelle. You know we love a good story around here. That oh, we, we love it. We practice and preach it. We like to know what a guy is kind of like. And you know, I try not to discredit you if you know maybe you're a little bit of a jerk or or yeah. any sort of thing like that. Like sure. I, I try to not get into the we'll politics of whatever Joe Mixon. A bump. We'll right. use the good character as a bump up. Exactly. And and I think I think that should be the way it is because yeah. I mean if 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 you've had these trials and tribulations throughout your life and you've come out. On on the good end of things, yeah, uh, uh, that speaks highly to your character, in my opinion. Right, and it gives me confidence drafting you and and, and taking you as as a fantasy football player because I know you're going to continue to work better. There's so many you're guys take this very seriously. Right, there's so many guys that just let rest on their laurels and they don't put in that time and, and work effort and like. So I want to know if that's what you're about or not, and then I can at least temper expectations if you're if it, if I don't get a good feel about that. Like you said, I'm trying not to overreact to the negative stuff, but like the positive stuff just gives me so much more confidence and like just a good feeling going forward. Right, because talent is 99% of the time going to trump character. Sure. Regardless of who you're talking about at what position, but... When you put not, the two together... Exactly. It could be, you could be the best... Magic happens. ...of all. Exactly. Well, we love Sony Michelle. Let's let let's let this healthy difference of opinion. Let's let Casey make his case for Chubb at three, and then I'll come in with my uh, my two cents. All right, what you got on Nick Chubb there, Case? All right. Well, we just heard Jay Wayne's opinion on what should be the one three, and again, I'm I'm really okay with the one three and the one four being either one of these Georgia backs, either Sony or Chubb. If you give me the choice at one three, I'm probably going to go with uh, Nick Chubb here, uh, basically right. for the reason of of. From 14 with with Gurley, you saw an extremely good back, and he caught the most balls that he had 
ever caught him. It was, I, I don't know what the number is. It's not. I don't have it here in front of me. 18 catches that rookie <clears throat> season for him, that freshman year. But then you get into that 15 season once Gurley was out of there, and the beginning of that season was so special, and he just looked like a guy who was outrageous. And, and I think if he didn't sustain the injury that he had, which was a pretty gruesome injury, that you right now, you, we would be discussing Chubb, uh, Barkley and Geis, and I think it would be you know a, a really candid and tough discussion whether or not who was the one one because of what this guy was doing was insane in I, 2015. I couldn't agree more, except for without that a gruesome, gruesome injury, he would have this would have been against Leonard Fournette last year because he would have been off the charts and come out as, in 2016. Everything you just said was spot on. He got all the he got not only was he just the bet, nation's best uh, freshman running back in 2014 that was the year that Gurley got hurt so he was he was able to get in there and overshadow Sonny Michelle in 2014 but that Mo start, Michelle could barely even get on the field exactly but that 2015 like you said he's got he's averaging 8.1 a carry with a long of 83 on you know nine 92 carries already seven touchdowns like he's getting a touchdown every you know eight times he touches the ball just ridiculous. Ridiculous so, stat, and then that was an ugly, ugly knee injury. But like, very yeah. poor knee injury. I was just and, pointing out that if sure. he didn't get hurt, he it would not have be against Saquon Barkley. It would have been against Leonard Fournette last year. Sure, that, I mean that's a that's a very fair point. Yeah, that's it. Because just because how awesome he was, and that so keep going. But I mean. <clears throat> In, in in 15, you saw, I, I saw everything that I needed to see coming off 14, that it was no fluke and yep. he had gotten better. Like yep. it's not, it wasn't even a question to me, like the eliteness of, I don't even know if that's a word, but the, the speed is. that he had after he was making contact with guys and, and bowling them over and then re-accelerating, there was nobody that could even keep pace with this guy. And and, and not to, I mean, the, the speed out of the backfield and acceleration out of the backfield was one thing, but the thing that I marveled at was the fact that he would make contact at the second level and then the re-acceleration was absolutely insane. Like nobody like he hit could, a NOS the, button. Right, those and, first couple of steps were absolutely outrageous And to me. you're talking about this eliteness as a, Freshman and sophomore playing in the SEC. Right. Vin running, Diesel hitting the NOS button. And running through cast in the they, vein of this, like the still best kid. Alabama defenses. He's, yep. He's still a kid. And, and, and he made Alabama look silly a couple of times. Yep. Um, there's not a ton of people who can say they did. Obviously, Sony Michelle in the championship game, like we just talked about, looked looked pretty good. And they, they probably should have fed him a little more. Um, but so after the injury that that occurred to, to Chubb in in 15 there, he came back in 16 and you know he wasn't quite the same guy. Um, but in 17 you started <clears throat> seeing again the guy who possessed a lot of these traits. The top end speed seemed to be fairly close to being back. He was he was you know fantastic at bouncing off of guys, running guys over, and and, and then creating well on his own and he's just back back to kind of being that bowling ball and exploding a little bit but maybe probably lacking that elite burst that we were talking about just at the beginning of this exactly like segment here the 2016 season for this is really this is really close to me because i'm a gamecock and marcus Lattimore was the best running back in the country absolutely and he got his knee ripped apart and then when he came back the next year and he got hurt against tennessee i literally started crying i remember i was watching the game with mj and he, I saw it as soon before the announcer saw it. I saw it, and I said, Lattimore's hurt again, and I literally started crying. And so for Chubb to come back and play football again at a nice, solid level in 2016 was awesome. It, it was and decent. It, no, but not not his play. was. Right. It was awesome for to the see person him, sure. to see. Because like you said, in 2014, 2015, pre-injury, he was Herschel Walker status. Oh, not like, There's Herschel absolutely. Walker status. So like just to get hurt... And to come back, I loved it to that, see you, you. I started pulling for Chubb because sure. at first I'm like I'm pulling You're against a him. Yeah, I'm pulling against him. SEC after East. the injury, I'm exactly. I, he's beating us up. After the injury, I'm pulling for him. He's not as good in 2016, but he's on the field, and I just loved it. There's no reason that in that 14, 15 season, a guy built like him should be able to do the things that he was doing. Exactly. That's what just didn't make just sense. Bo Jackson, me. just Bo and Jackson. Then, and then the 16 thing happens, and he, you know, he's, he's he's out there. He's out there, but he's a little bit of a shell of himself. But then in 17, I feel like you see kind of 
all of his attributes coming back a little bit. I mean, he still possesses the same outstanding balance, the quick feet, the bowling ball like features that he always did. He just may not quite possess that same explosiveness that we were talking about right in the beginning of this thing, where after he made contact with somebody or his first couple steps were just so fast and so up to speed. And it just didn't make sense that a guy with that frame could possibly do that. True. It, it, it really just didn't make sense. And I think all this really translates well to an NFL game. And you can argue with that. Maybe he'll just be a one and two down guy. But I think he's got all the traits to do it on all three downs. You saw him catch some balls as a as a freshman in, in uh, at UGA here. Um, so... You know, I, I could go either way on Sony or Chubb, but I, in, in my opinion, I want Chubb a little more than Sony. I think his game immediately translates to the NFL game a little smoother. And, you know, maybe he does get profiled as a one or two back down kind of guy. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, he did only have 31 total receptions. So it's like less than half of what Sony had. And I guess that'd probably be. The, the deal breaker for me between the two is the, the pass catching ability. But I mean, this dude has all the key words. I mean, power, speed, agility, vision, forget an arm tackle. The short area burst is pretty awesome, pretty explosive, definitely pre knee injury and post. I think well, it's getting stronger. Like you see exactly. him getting stronger and getting back to that. I, and I think he still has some room to improve sure. and get it, more back. He's, he's not wearing a knee brace, which is yeah. so impressive to me yeah. that. Right now in 17, there is no knee brace visible. There's no there's no visible, uh, like if you didn't ever see the 14 and 15 chub, that you wouldn't really even know that anything happened. Right. You would still think he was a really good back. You just didn't know how good his good was. Right. right. Yeah, that 14 um, is ridiculous. It's off the charts. And I can concede that, you know, Sony kind of played into that third down role now at, at this year. There wasn't as many catches to go around for any of the backs. Yeah. Right. Um, but Sony would definitely profile better as the third down guy. And that, that would be my one drawback of saying, you know, maybe I could be okay with Chubb or uh, Sony over Chubb is that, I, you know, the three down thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <There's> a- <laughs> Well, like you said, the, solid grunting. The, the 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 funny part that the 2016 stats, the year after the injury, this is we we literally just spent a few minutes talking about Sony Michelle and his resolve as a person and and everything that he went through. The thing that Chubb went through was, I'm Bo Jackson. I'm the next Herschel Walker. Oh my God, my knee's crooked, bad crooked. He comes back the next year. He goes 224. He carries a carries a rock 224 times. Puts up 1130 yards eight touchdowns with a long of 55 like that's a good that's season. That's a fantastic season. But that was a shell of himself. Right. You know what I mean? So they're like uh, the kid has ob- obviously just to play the next season was a miracle. He to put up those type of stats in the SEC was amazing and then he had obviously improved on it this year, doubled his touchdowns and crushed it with on the same amount of carries, went up 200 yards and double the touchdowns. So I'm all about what this kid's been through, uh, and the n- n- non-knee brace wearing Joker right now is awesome. I think you saw a good step forward from 16 to 17. Yep. You saw, especially at the end of the season at 17, you, you saw a lot of the good traits of him coming back. He can still get the edge at an elite level. Oh, sure. Like, extremely well. The one knock that I would say I have on him is that sometimes, even when runs start in the middle of the field, he is a lot of the times looking to kind of go out towards that sideline in multiple occasions that I watched for him, not necessarily bouncing the run outside, but after he navigates through the middle of the field, like through the the center and the guard play there, I, a lot of the time I see him kind of angling towards that sideline, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Well, but, I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't know if that maybe was 14 tape that you no, were no, watching. No, no, no. This was all 17 tape that I'm watching with that. He was saying that that injury that he got taught him like a valuable lesson no, as a I running back. Sorry to cut you off. I didn't watch all 17 tape. I've watched all the tape no, that's possibly to watch with this guy. No, but I, said I was 14. Say, but my my the the thing that I was saying right there was the 17 tape of him. Yeah. Kind of. He always seems to navigate a little bit towards the outside of the field when he starts to break one off a little bit. Well, he. So I watched this thing where he was talking about like that that injury that he had and how he's trying to learn a valuable lesson because he was this his coach Brian uh, McClendon was telling him not to bust it to the sideline just just attack and so like when he 
that injury that he had occurred when Going he was to running lines. to the sideline yeah. versus Tennessee. And so, like, he, he kind of has that in the back of his mind. So it took him a little while before he would even – not think about it going to the outside. So I, I don't know. I, I, I it's, it's weird I, that you well, say that. I, I watched a lot of 17. I watched a ton of 17 tape just to make sure that I still had this guy ahead of Sony. And what I came away with was really good and he can power it up the middle. But a lot, I do still see him kind of when he takes his runs, he starts angling to the outside a little sooner than I would maybe like to see that happen. But he's got the elite speed to, to, to get, not the elite speed, but he's got good enough speed yeah. to, it's, it's, well, the game speed is impeccable. I mean, given he's his like, size, it's, it's right. pretty elite to be able to do what he does. Let me throw something out there before I'm, I'm done talking about these two guys because what we're trying to do is argue back and forth on the one, three, one, four, and we're happy taking either one of them. Really, my thing about it is I didn't. I I, I watched plenty of Georgia this year because they played themselves into plenty of obviously uh, you a know, big TV national spotlight. Na- they played themselves into natural national spotlights, but I, both of these running backs had had everybody's attention all year long. The problem with it for me was they're both so good. Like the, there was no change of pace because they're both so badass. I couldn't tell if when Sony Michelle came in, the defenses were just tired of trying to tackle Chubb, and then when Chubb came in, they're just like, we don't know what's going on, and uh, we're tired of tackling anybody around here. Right. You know, and obviously mixing that, DeAndre Swift with right, all that. You look at the uh, Oklahoma game, and both of those running backs, both I mean, Chubb is crushing it, and Sony Michelle's got three touchdowns for 180 yards on like nine carries. You know what I mean? So it's like they could do nothing wrong against a nation's top team. And so it, it, both of these guys were so good. I'm not sure if they tag team defenses together yeah. to just blow them up all game long. So I'm not sure if if I'm picking one today, I might lean Michelle myself just transferring to the NFL on his smoothness and he's a little bit lighter and maybe he can work a little bit in the passing game and all that. You're looking for guys that can be on the field all three downs, but I got no. I'm, I'm pulling for Chubb. Yeah. So I, I'm a, I'm gonna just say that you're lucky to be able to get either one of these guys at three and four. Maybe if I had to make a pick, it was it would be Sony at three. But you can't go wrong with either one of them. I'm, I'm my final thing on on Chubb is just the model of consistency, and he came back from a big injury and still did well in 16, and then has just continued to get better. And I think that there's still you know room to even improve from where he was in 17 to even get back a little closer to where he was in 15 um and i think just it's just very impressive for him to put that model of consistency out his entire career and i i'm not saying that like sony that. wasn't nope. consistent his I whole career that. but i feel like the sony's, longevity i mean i feel like sony's really gotten a boost from the national spotlight of these last couple of games that not, I'm not hard to any, ignore right no, no, right it is and i'm not trying to take anything away yep. from him but yep. in in my head the reason why i have him ahead of him are for all the reasons that we stated in that last little bit that i just had yeah and, and I, i'm okay like i said to lead this whole thing off with if you want to take Michelle three, I'm okay with taking. If you force me to take Michelle three because Chubb was gone, well, I don't know, that doesn't even make sense. But yeah, you know what four, I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with going either I, either. I see what you're saying there, and maybe Michelle doesn't do everything he did if Chubb hadn't beat the defenses up. I'm sure that Chubb does what he does without Michelle. Maybe Michelle doesn't look as spectacular as he does if 230 pound Chubb hadn't come through there and just busted him up all game. So maybe, maybe, I mean. Chubb is, is is a little bit more of the running back mold, but Sony is a little more of that third down mold with with the first with two downs average, in with mind. The other, yeah, sure. And so he, I do think Sony's a little bit more of an electric home run cut, and Chubb might be a little bit more safer from a quote unquote running back standpoint. Yeah. Sony might be that guy that scores the PPR points for you in fantasy football as Perhaps. an NFL running back. He might be you sure. know the more he might Sony might be more of the you know guy that can kiss it consistently stay yeah. in your starting lineup versus Chubb. No, nothing wrong with Jordan Howard because when he goes for 100 yards and two touchdowns, you're super happy with it. But not that Jordan Howard is, is Nick Chubb. But you see what I'm saying? There? No, no. That I, power mean, I, back, I, get, that, I, get, I get what you're saying in the profile of – you're basically saying profiling – Chubb as a first and second down back, but I, did. I, I think I did. I think that the reason that I have him at three is because I do believe that he can be yeah. the elite workhorse of of an NFL franchise, and I I think that his skill set transfers more immediately to being 
to the chance of being an extreme elite player. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's I why think I you have can, him ahead of him. You can look at all the guys that have Leonard Fournette in their lineups this year, and they'll be just happy to plug Nick Chubb yeah. in right beside him. Yeah. I mean, I can't argue against Nick Chubb. I mean, he's great. I love his game speed. It's quick on autopilot, but he has that other gear of acceleration. He has a great pad level, and he always gets leverage on the defender. He's going to drag him for an extra few yards. He has some of the most impressive three-yard runs that I've seen. Um, but he can also exploit you in space. He's athletic. He can hurdle you. He can put you down with a shoulder or a stiff arm. And, and he's good at not getting off track. Like, he'll shift his track to keep north and south like mm-hmm. i don't I, well there's not a lot of slowdown in his when he goes to make his move he doesn't slow down a ton he keeps it north and south which is one of my favorite things about backs sure is when they don't slow down to make those moves they just they they're elite enough to to get up field and make that that quick change of pace and and change of direction but really keep it kind yeah. of north and south and they're, they're they're big enough to run through any arm tackle that you're going to throw at yeah him. forget an arm tackle um but and, and then one last thing here for me on nick Chubb is that he's also a good dude like he's one of the most popular players in the georgia locker room like he's admired for his ability um not just his ability but his work ethic and his modesty like if you watch him on an interview he's almost uninterested in even talking about himself or to you like he just wants to get back to what he's got to do to yeah. help his team win big and then, fan like, of that Love this dude. He definitely. Whether you want, we can argue Sony Michelle and sure and, and Chubb all day, but like there's a tear break here, and it's not even close. Absolutely, and I think that's the. I think that's the biggest. I mean, I think it's one and two, and then I think it's the. I think it's these two guys that are. I, you could even argue a tear break between them, especially because of the injury to Chubb. But then, I think the net. You know, at four, there's another kind of sort of tear break, and I think that's that's why I'm okay with either one sure. at three or four. However, you want to juggle them up. I'm just partial to Chubb. Yeah. yeah, so if you're listening to this, target 1-4 in your draft. It versus, you know, if you got 1-5 or 1-6, maybe the earlier you can get up there and move up a spot or two, it gives you the ability to be stuck. If you're at 1-4, you're going to get stuck with one of these guys and you're in great shape. Last year, months away from my rookie draft, I pulled off three or four successive trades that ended up getting me into 1-5 because I knew that I wanted Dalvin Cook or better. And I knew that Corey Davis was going in that mix somewhere, and I wanted one of those other four running backs. And I worked my way up into one five in a in a draft months ahead, just because I knew I could see the, all the rookies coming out, and I needed Dalvin Cook or better, and it worked out. And you got and you need to get there sooner than than later. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's uh let's go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back on the other side with the uh, next tier of rookie running backs for your pleasure. All right, let's uh, let's roll on to number five here in our rookie running back rankings. I think we all uh, are in agreement here that we want to put uh, Carry on. Johnson in there. It's not. I, I don't think it's a question for me. What's his name again? It's uh, Carry on. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 whole reason for putting him in there is is <clears throat> pretty simple. I think that in my opinion, the what I saw and the way he ran and everything he does. I think he transfers really well into an NFL style offense. I think he's got great hands. I think he can pass protect. I think he can do everything you want him to do. He's going to get on the field one way or another. That's why I'm okay with putting carry on Johnson as my fifth best running back. If you want to take Rojo ahead of him, that's fine with me. He's also an elite athlete, but carry on is a little bit bigger and he seems more safe. Like it's not I landing agree. spot dependent. Right, I, I guess a hundred percent. That that's what we talked about when we talked about him in in uh in the show where we were breaking all these down, all these guys down at length. Um, His running style is vicious and delicious. <laughs> Um, he just has it all. Like he's he's got a he's got a bunch of patience behind him. He's got a great burst. I don't think in seventeen he was pretty much banged up the entire season, and he gutted out so much of that season at big times. And against Missouri, he came back super injured and scored like five touchdowns or something crazy. So you guys are are both set and and good with Carry On Johnson being at five at five. Sure, sure. I've coming off the big four. Carry On Johnson tear break. Plugged. Carry on Johnson plugging in at five and, 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 and you guys are good at, and, and agree in one. Yeah, and, and I'm okay if, if you <clears throat> feel strongly that Rojo should be at five. That's fine with me too. But I, I, I well, just like Jay Wayne alluded to, I think carry on is super safe. Rojo's a little bit of a smaller sleight of hand guy. Those of us catching up, that's Ronald Jones. Uh, Rojo is Ronald Jones. Rojo out of can USC. go. What's funny here, I'm not even going to pretend like I'm as educated on you two guys about these backs right now. 
um, and the last couple of weeks I've been out and what's I had to listen to our own podcast. You've been to listening edu- to your own I, show to figure I did. out. I was educating myself on these backs. I listened to the last two weeks podcast twice just to figure out what was going on because this is the best place to get this information. Right. So <laughs> the uh, <laughs> back pat, maybe what, what I was liking about the points you were making about carry on Johnson was probably just the 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 best, maybe most ready, pro ready skill set to transfer right away. And that's that's the kind of guy I'm looking in because again, uh, you know, we talk a lot here about not messing up whether you're in a startup draft or a rookie draft. Just trying to take the safer picks so you don't mess it up. And if Carry on Johnson is the safest pick at five, for me, I'm down with that. I yeah. like I like the the safeness of him. I think he's got phenomenal hands. In my opinion, every, every catch that I could possibly see of him is with the hands. It's it's a weird offense. I like that too. That's what Jay Wayne said was talking about how he was catching it with his hands. And I think he's an underrated. I think he's got to be underrated in the passing game. He Absolutely. only had twenty four receptions, or he had twenty four receptions this last year, um, which isn't the biggest number as far as a one year total goes. But they but have other solid. backs there, and it's and a, it's a weird offense. It's a weird offense. Very they, weird offense. It's all about can your running back make this right. offense go, which he did. Which um, is why Auburn was so efficient this year. Is right, the, is the defense was half decent on sometimes and uh, on on sometimes the <laughs> the the, uh, the defense was half half decent sometimes. That's probably why we took that one star review because you can't speak correct English. Probably I'm can't trying speak to speak correct English. Trying to speak so fast as we that, go off the rails. We got a one star review and it was because we can't speak well. Yeah, well, I would. We're a bad interview. Apparently. Love to have that guy on the show. <laughs> we're a bad interview, but um, whatever. It doesn't matter at this point. Nah, but this dude. Uh, it, back to the passing game, like it's it's handsy catching, and like he can make the the catch that's behind him on his back hip. Like he can go outside of his body. I think he's underrated as a pass catcher. I think he's a solid pass protector. Absolutely. Um, Which so are I all think, these are all things that lead to you being safe and being able to immediately come into the NFL landscape and be a credible starter, in my opinion. Exactly. Right. That's that's the point here, and because it is safe, and and all those, it's not just safe because all oh, this guy looks good. It's safe because those those keywords that you just mentioned will help you get on the field earlier. Because no, it's it's very frustrating to have a running back that you've picked medium high in a draft, especially a rookie draft, and they don't get a chance until week 14. If you play in a small bench league, you might have already shuffled them out of there already. That's you know? fair. Not that you're going to do that to your 1-5 and 1-6 strip pick in a draft, but how many people drafted Jamal Williams and didn't have him on their team when he broke out at the end of the season last year in a That's small a bench? a good chance on a small bench I'm just team. on a small bench team. Just want to throw that out, out there. there. But carry on, I feel like, checks a lot of the boxes. He can run physically if he has to. He's got a ridiculous stiff arm. He's got all the patience in the world. He's got plenty of burst. And like I said, I don't think you saw the best to carry on in 17. He was banged up all season. He came in and played a ridic- Alabama, like came in and played a ridiculous game against Alabama and was nicked up the entire game. Yeah, he actually injured his shoulder in the third quarter of that game, checked out, came back in, re-injured it again, but like stuck it out. And that's coming off of like he dealt with a, with a high ankle sprain early in like the spring practices. A and he had a hamstring injury in week one. He had a, another ankle injury in, in – well, that was week six of, of 2016. But my point would be that he plays well through injury, right. which we said about plays other guys. Plays at a high level through injury. Right. And I really like that. You have to love that because you're going to have to play through injury in the NFL. Not There's even a no question. doubt about it. We like that. And what I also like about the way this discussion right here is broken down is because Carry On Johnson is not the consensus five. Uh, you can't find – there's not a list out there that SEC shows – SEC player of the year. There's not, Offensive there's player not of the a year. list out there. Obviously, your first list in this industry is going to go to DLF because those boys have been there and they do it. They got a pretty decent system over there. They're not 1-5 on carry on Johnson, and nobody else is. I've been looking all over the place, and nobody's 1-5 on And I assure on you that's not why I it did is, it. We no, did it because we not. put on our homework, that's and that's how we feel. Exactly right. exactly right. That's exactly right. We're not – I mean, the, that's what I was – when we were talking about guys at two being chalk – People earn the fact to be chalk sometimes, but then when you get walk when you get away from that just obvious elite status there, you have to put work in. And these two guys right here have put some work in, and we're bringing you Carry On Johnson as the fifth best running back. It is February fourth, and they we're going to say it one time, and maybe not ten other times. Landing spot, you know, free agency, right. and the NFL draft is still yet to come. But here you are in in in, in the early week of February. If you like the way some of these rankings adjust here for us. 
that all you need to do is go look at your teams and your potential draft spots and say, hey, where this this guy might be here, uh, you know, this I'm, I might target this guy here, so I'm, I might need to trade up two spots just to be right, you know, just just to prepare yourself. I mean, and, we could we could sit here all day and be like, well, oh, this guy's very landing spot dependent, and that's what you hear a lot, and and it, it's very fair. It but that's fair. what I love so much about carry on is exactly. that I don't really even care. I don't. I don't carry on where he goes. Like, <laughs> boom, <laughs> he can go anywhere because he's got this combination of patience and decisiveness to go with this mean. He's a tackle shredder. Like well, he, he just is. sheds tackles right. and like, and then you throw in the passing game prowess to go on top of it. And like anywhere he goes, I'm in. I'm down. I'm. I feel safe. I feel good. I like it all. There's some long speed when he's healthy. Yeah. To, to go with it. Great burst. And so let me get carry on at he five. He can create like, on his own. So this is going to make you start to feel better about your pick one seven one eight because of the other wide receivers that may go in front of this guy. So you're starting to feel better about that guy. And a, a last a last minute note on this guy before we move on. Along with Rojo, he's one of the youngest backs in this class. It's yeah. not something that I get hung up on. Coming in, youth coming in and, at twenty years old. I don't get hung up. on. I don't on, even know how old all these dudes are. That's how little I really <laughs> care about all that. I mean, but, I, I know how old they all are. Yeah. And, and Carry On's one of the younger twenty year olds with Rojo. It doesn't hurt to be good. The early, Absolutely. You know, the younger you are, it doesn't and, hurt and, to be. And it doesn't. Geis and, and Saquon are also in their twenties, and the other two guys are twenty. You know. Um, Chubb and and um, Chubb, Chubb and Chubb Sony, and are, Sony both are both twenty two. So things happen. Chubb's got had the knee blow out, and Sony Michelle had to deal with Chubb. You know, to be able to stick around and st- what I like about Sony before we get going, this will be real quick. I like that he didn't come out as a junior without having the performances that would earn him a right paycheck and didn't come, you know what I mean? Yeah. You come out early when you shouldn't have, but somebody said, oh, go ahead and go out there and get a paycheck, and then you get drafted on the last day of the draft if you get lucky. Sony came back. Made and, himself some and, money. Exactly. Good for Sony. All right, so carry on at five, and who are we liking at six? We got to go Rojo. I th- Rojo can <laughs> go gotta, at six. Got to go Rojo at six. All right, so he's six foot, 210. Listed at DLF here, so two ten might Other be a little have overzealous. Two hundred, right? I think I think he's around the two two hundred two hundred five mark is probably more realistic. I think one thing is for sure: his uh, two seasons ago, before he hit his final year at USC, he put on ten pounds of muscle, right? Which to we get talked bigger about and in stronger. Our first Rojo breakdown. Yeah, I right? see him listed here at two hundred and a couple other sites. So between 200, 210, 10 pounds of muscle wouldn't wouldn't make us upset. But we love the the ability that he put on that extra weight and still didn't lose anything like his last year at USC. Um, I think he's got – like obviously he's a game breaker and he's the type of dude – like I, I mentioned this when I was talking about Sonny Michelle. If the defense makes a mistake, like if you don't take the perfect angle to try and tackle this dude, he will make you pay. And like – he could be getting stuffed and shut down all day long, but the second any of those eleven defenders have a lapse in their job, he's going to make your he's day. Make you pay in the blink of an eye. And my you, day is made. He's going to make you pay and make your day. Okay. Bail, he'll even bail some hay. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> that that was good when you guys were breaking down Ronald Jones in the previous podcast. That that part was good because you 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 do like to see somebody who can break away. It's uh, if, especially later in the game. It's not been good. I'd rather see somebody that keeps plugging and plugging and plugging and finds that hole and takes it to the house, then hangs his hat, and then the coaches. You and know, it's it's he doesn't need a very big crevice. He needs a crevice. He doesn't need a hole. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of where is I'm a crevice at. Well, smaller than a crease. Sliver. Yeah, I a think I think of. a crevice is smaller <laughs> than a crease, but I'm not sure what the actual definition of either yeah. one are i think crease is smaller than crevice okay oh, that's fine crevice just sounds a little bigger than crevice, crevice sounds like something uh, hit the earth and crevasse big... sounds <laughs> like it's a little bigger but crevice <laughs> boy you dumb <laughs> <laughs> all right so give me give me why get, don't give me why ronald jones isn't almost isn't one five instead of carry on give me why tell me why ronald jones is six instead of seven with that next guy well what? i mean i don't know i guess i could take this i mean Carry on just seems more of that running back role, and he still has the receiving ability to go with it. But I really can't argue too much against you if you did want to go Rojo at five, because I do think that he has some underrated power. He's definitely no right. dancing with as quick and as shifty as he is. He never dances. He can get his pad level low. You can't put him in a box, like as Casey likes to say. He doesn't mind contact, and so like that all leads me to believing that he can get it done. Like between the tackles, and he averaged over six yards of carry. So, I, that was a perfect answer. 
exact opposite of the way I asked the question. So all that tells me is I asked the wrong question because that was a perfect answer. I'm glad you answered it the way you wanted it to. Well, I so, was going to give that answer no matter the question. So. <laughs> that was why you loaded up. So my notes, dogs. I'm ready to go. You, you had that loaded up. <laughs> didn't matter what I had to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jason just blew it out the water. Ronald Jones Back is good. Back patting here. Ronald Jones is good if you didn't know. But to answer your original question, I do, I do want to answer it. It was, it was basically like why is... Kind of why is there a tear break here? Why is Ronald Jones above the dudes that are going to come up next in this exactly. list? Exactly. Yeah, and my was, answer would basically be because he is a game breaker. He's a game changer. He has that that X factor. It's like athletic jump off the page freak ability that kind of nobody else has going forward with the rest of these guys, I don't think. Some of them have hints of it, and some of them could possibly be pretty good, but I do think there's a, a tear break here in, in the top six. I got to round it off with, with Rojo. That's that's a, that's kind of the answer I was looking for, or the question I was trying to ask you, because I was looking ahead here. I'm super excited, not to tease it a little bit, but uh, you know, Penny, Rashad Penny's name is out there everywhere. Hot commodity. He's a hot commodity, but our next... How could you not have Penny in the top <laughs> six? You guys know nothing. You, yeah. know, you are stupid. We're going to get some thumbs down They're for cool. no Rashad Penny. I'm super excited about where we go after this because we got the next two guys we're going to debate is Josh Adams and Rashad Penny. And on every list I can find, Josh Adams' name is way down there. So yeah. I'm super stoked about Love where some this Josh Adams, but I mean, just to round off Ronald Jones here, the dude averaged over six yards a carry in... Oh, 5.9. And it's... Right. Ca- yeah, for a career. Yeah. Ah. Well, no, over career is six point one. Ha! <laughs> yeah, duh. Anyway, um, and then I, I, one last thing. I think it's it's shocking that he didn't have more catches. There's only thirty one in his career, um, but I, I, I think he was underused, and well, I think he possibly could be better than that. I, I, that's something that I wanted to just add on to this thing. I, I, I'm, I like Ronald Jones. You are, you and I are in agreement that there's a tear break here. I think it's he, he's six or five, however you want to toss it up. I think he can has the ability to be a three down back. Yeah, he is a little light. If 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 he does end up being at two ten, awesome. We as you alluded to, he gained ten pounds of muscle between one year and another and another, and you saw no drop off. If he Love can gain, if he can gain ten more, like they're saying that he has, I I don't know if that's true or not. We'll find out in a, in, a, in a couple of months here. Right. One yeah. of the biggest things I'm looking for already at the combine is Ronald Jones weigh in. Right. But he's got electric speed and all the things that you mentioned. But the, 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 the crazy psychiatry or psychology psychology that's that's kind of weighed in on all this is as is, is that and, and I'm I'm in it, too, is that like this guy is a, is is a pass catcher. And I, I said before that he was criminally underused in the pass game. But I mean, really, what evidence do we have to go off of here? And I yeah. mean, this is that's just criticizing me and, and you and everybody else in this room and everybody else is talking about it. Like, I mean, literally. Like you're barely over ten catches a goddamn year here. Like what's Who? what's te- Ronald Jones? Yeah. Like what is telling you that he's an elite pass catcher besides the fact that he's a little bit smaller of a guy and he's an elite athlete level? I think it's because the catches that he took, the, the, the right, catches sure. were long. That's 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 the smear there. He's av- he averaged thirteen point four a catch. That's off it. This thing, which w- w- I and I, I fall victim to this as well. And everyone, you know, some people are alluding to. Uh, we we were talking to the dynasty dummies, uh, and and Zach Reed and and he was a little disappointed with the pass catchers in this uh, class class and kind of pointed to Ronald Jones as as one of the guys who he liked because he thought he could be a three down guy and a pass catcher and and is the same reasons that I like him too. But then but when he you, might have the least like right. Uh, proof of being a exa- third down exactly. back as any of these guys. which is just it, you know it's just I just wanted to point out. That it's it's a little Psychology, bit of a flawed yeah. uh yeah because when you take that when you take a, one or two balls to the house from sixty yards away that he, skews your yard the thing per is is that you uh, you've in your mind you've you've created this illusion that oh yeah of course this guy is a pass catching guy who is is he just was criminally underused and I'm I said that ex- that's an exact quote I from said last that week, you said yeah, that I said that but in in what way does he allude to the fact and stats wise that he's an elite pass catcher and and i just want i think it's funny i think it's something that you need to i i, I do believe that he can catch passes and we've alluded to all these guys as we think that ha- possess the ability to catch passes i think all these guys can catch passes some of them at a higher clip than others 
Um, it's just what they were or were not asked to do in college. And apparently, USC wasn't asking him to catch the passes. That happens. And and another thing that I'm looking for, one of my favorite things at the combine is the running backs going and doing the receiver drills. Right. I love that because you really can see. Love a gauntlet and, drill. You can love. You can see. A natural catcher from a guy who's struggling, like the Keenan Allen one-handed thing in the Pro in the Pro Bowl stuff. You know, like he yeah. just wasn't a one-handed catcher, and he's oh, like, man, I that can't was catch so it one-handed. Sad. You, know? he's, you can see he it. knew it. He's like, he, I can't get one-handed. What, what did I tell y'all boys when that thing started? <laughs> when he went and caught that first pass and tried to catch that thing and, and cradle it with yeah. that with that bicep mm-hmm. catch and kind of like brought that arm back. I said he can't catch it one arm, and he knows it. Yeah. Yep. I said, what business? Does this guy out here knowing God damn yeah. well he's got to catch it with one hand? Why did he sign he up can't. for this drill? He, he knows he can't. <laughs> and at the end of it, they were like, "What happened?" And he was he was talking about what you know, whatever. And then finally, he, he was like, "Cried." I you know I can't catch it with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> he catches it with two hands almost better than anybody, but yeah. not so hot with one. So I'm open, looking forward yeah. to the gauntlet girls for the running backs. I like to and see I've the running backs. And I said it before. I'll say it again. We can't know anything until we get to the combine. Sure, sure, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did. I did think it was a little funny that a lot of people allude to this guy being like one of the three down guys because he and, and me included, as because he's a pass catcher and he can do it all and all that kind of stuff. But there really isn't much example to go off of. And this is this is the uh, world that we call analysis in fantasy football. So lots of good stuff coming up from us. Well, I think that'll uh, that, is that going to put a wrap on this. Uh, I think that'll put a bow on this particular show and, and where we're at. Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, nice break after six. Nice break after six. We'll be back with the other fourteen, which are another like I think seven through eleven are maybe the most fun guys to talk about, and it's really the toughest uh, order of guys of 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 players to put in an order here. Absolutely, there's for me. one through four, there's five and six, and then there's a tier. At seven through eleven, and well, we're just dumb that Penny isn't in the top six. So that's, that's true. all there is to it. Thumbs, that's true. Thumbs down to this. Foreshadowing, Penny's not in my top seven or eight either. But I, I could be swayed. I could be swayed. Re- we'll see. Well, this seven we'll through see. eleven is very swayable. Seven through eleven is hard. I got a fine tooth comb looking for this seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm looking for somebody to take in the back end of my rookie drafts because I'm. Check. I'm always drafting from the back. Well, the well, thing is, I like all of them. One There's guy that you to like won't about be them upset all. about taking, I think, at the bottom of these drafts is a is a Wadley and a Justin Jackson. I yeah. think those guys can help you out in a pass catching ability. Don't you go giving away too much too soon. Well, I don't know if those guys are in that seven through eleven range. They're they're kind of in the next tier, but I'm very excited about that tier too. I, I do want to give one quick. Uh, shout out to a couple of guys who mm, we haven't got there, we case. haven't quite gotten into, and I was saving them for the end of this one through fourteen list. But who got a gong hit? There? We did, we did. I want to get them out there and at two and, four eighteen, two four eighteen, February fourth, and just talk about some of these guys who um, maybe kind of got on my radar as, as a little bit of like some deep sleepers. Maybe it, it who's it, your it, deepest deep deep? Well, Ido it, it, Smith is obviously not a deep sleeper, and and. And all things uh, honest here, we don't have him on the top 14, but I haven't evaluated him fully. fully, And I haven't evaluated some of these other guys. And Ido Smith could really jump up this list. He's caught a ton of balls, and I liked everything that I saw from him on the surface. Star Ido Smith going forward for sure. Um, But some other guys that I just wanted to quickly bring up that I haven't heard a whole lot about is, you know, there's been some talks of of, we'll get into the 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 Kellys and and all those guys who can catch passes in this next group of guys. But outside of those guys, there's there's a guy, Jamal Morrow in uh, Washington State, who's a senior. He averaged six over six yards a carry, which is not the reason that you're drafting him. He's what I did just see is that he's five, nine, two oh three, which if that's the case, I want this guy all day, every day. But he had two over 200 career catches. 60 Boom. is freshman year, 60 is last year. He's fantastic in open space. You are not going to bring him down with a bullshit arm tackle. Jamal Morrow? Lo- and, and I loved everything I saw from this guy as a pure pass catcher, as a guy that you can get so late in your draft. I'm sure by the time that process comes along, just early on right now, that, that he's one of my favorites to kind of steal as a great pass catcher. He's not going to get on any team and be like, oh my God, this guy's you know ridiculous running back and he's going to take over any team. But he's definitely a guy to watch. Like somebody who catches 200 balls and is that fluid in the passing game. Here we go. And is so good at run. He, I mean, he's honestly good running between the tackles. The Here we go. Over six yards of carry is fantastic. Here we go. This is why 2418. 
We're coming at you with Jamal Morrow. So I got that right. I don't because yeah. he's not in the top thirty running backs on DLF. He's, on he's, on he's no not on list. this list. This he's not on my computer list because he's very interesting. Love this. You know why I love this? Because last year, first week of April, Casey brings us a name that nobody knows. It was Chris Carson. Casey told us in April to watch Chris Carson and try to pick him up late. Next thing you know, a couple months later, he's a starter for the Seahawks. So. All, all these guys who are sleepers or whatever, and, and you know, people could peg Marla Mack for a sleeper if you want, and that's what people were going with as sleepers, and that's fine. He got and so hyped, though, obviously, that wasn't even a sleeper. Well, I mean, he but, was like, I mean, woke. As, Marla as Mack as, was woke. As far as drafts goes, year. and he's a little later in the thing, so he's quote-unquote a sleeper, but Chris Carson was really a sleeper. Chris Carson gets drafted in the seventh round yep. by the Seahawks. Yep. Now, he could have easily been undrafted. Yep. Let's, they don't cut Chris Carson, or they don't cut Alex Collins, and right. CJ Procise stays healthy. They still and, have Thomas Rawls. And, and they still have Thomas Rawls and all that other stuff. And you never hear from Chris Carson, and I sound like an idiot. So it, it, it's just so situational and so lucky that good point. Chris Carson even got on the field. That's good point. Um, but it's just somebody that I saw, and I saw something from. I, wanna, I wanted to point you towards Jamal Morrow on, on the guys who – don't see a bunch of pass catchers in this in this uh, said draft class. This is a guy who caught a ton of balls. This is over way over Theo Riddick production of catching balls and looks just as good as doing it at Washington State. Well, just just to clarify, I'm not talking about him not being in the top 50 rookie rankings on DLF. I'm talking about when he you, click, on the you click the running back tab and they give you 30 running backs he ain't on the list. This is huge. Somebody so, to look into. Somebody to look into. And if you don't have time to look into it, guess what? We're going to look into it. Just keep listening. Casey's going to bring, bring looks, you some more he looks uh, great. hot I, fantasy fire later, right? I love everything that he's that he's bringing to the table. Obviously, you're not looking at him as a pure running back standpoint, but from a pass catcher and a guy who could take five carries a game or whatever. He's got somebody that's very interesting to me. Uh, the guy from Grambling, uh, Martez Carter, I think his name is, is, is super interesting. The game tape's really fun to watch. I've mentioned him once or twice before. And then I, I got into a little, uh, I think his name's Rock Johnson from Jacksonville State. The Gamecocks or whatever down there is sure. is, is pretty interesting. So Rock there's Johnson. two Gamecocks? Just a just couple of... Rock cu- Thomas. Rock, Rock Thomas. Thomas. He's Rock on the Thomas. list. He's on number 25 out of 30. He makes the just, list. Just a couple of guys <laughs> who I investigated in, but, but Morrow and... and uh, Rock the, Thomas. And the guy from Grambling, Carter, are two guys, especially Morrow. Morrow's way up on my list there's of no sleepers. grambling guy on this and, list Woo, uh, boy the, we got some stuff to talk about coming up is, is very interesting so i just wanted to throw those out there at the end of this podcast i thought we were going to get through all 14 but of course we only made it through six we we're already six. talking about people that are on the top 30 of the lf website what what, what are we doing here guys per jamal youth. morrow washington state go check that out when we had 14 Theo Riddick. we have 14 dudes on the show sheet and I was thinking to myself there's no way we get to all I these came dudes. into this and I was like oh we're going to crush this but it's going to be so quick <laughs> big nah. goes back just clogging this thing up <laughs> well that's a solid that's a solid wrap on a Super Bowl champagne Sunday yeah who y'all got in the Super Bowl Eagles I don't think line. I don't think I've ever said this in my entire life but I'm going to go fly Eagles fly cuz for the wife for for the wife for the my wife's wife, pleasure die hard yeah, for her pleasure and mine um she is decked out and she rocking is, she is a hot mic she's she slaving is, over a hot mic and uh i i can't stand to see the patriots i respect the shit out of the patriots um but i just don't want them to get one more i've been so far removed from my eastern pennsylvania roots that i'm okay with the eagles getting one as long as i don't get any more near ever that area after <laughs> no, in yeah. real life i i've me too. I love I love Tom Brady. I like I respect what the Patriots do, but I just want to see somebody else winning this time. And I really wanted it to be the Vikings, but I'll yeah. sub in the Eagles. Go Nick Vikings Foles. at home would have been cool. Saints would have been cool. Oh, yeah. Saints Patriots would have been fave. It would have been good. I've, I hope for Alex's sake for uh, Vikings Jags would have been a lot of fun for the uh, for Mary to the Games physical therapist, our in house physical therapist for her sake. Well, I guess let's go Eagles. Let's do it. Eagles money right. line. Well, that'll do it for today's show. Uh, Be sure to hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We have our own individual handles at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co., at Jay Wayne's World. Please, if you're on iTunes, give us a five-star review. Just click that little little five stars. You don't even have to write a review. Hit subscribe on any of your platforms of choice, iTunes, Podbean, Scoot. uh, Google Play. Google Play, Stitcher, Stitcher. (laughs) TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. But really, iTunes. And we are now nominated... For Charleston's best local podcast. So for all of our listeners out there, please go out there, 
CharlestonCityPaper.com. For real, for real. For real, for real, for and real. And please serious news. vote for us for best local Charleston podcast. Little disclaimer, you got to use a Charleston zip code. 294303 CharlestonCityPaper.com The best of 03. The best of 2018 We're under the uh, culture and arts entertainment Yeah, heading. find us under the entertainment if you're, at, if you're having problems finding us, send us an email Hit us up on Twitter We'll glad to direct you right to that thing We'll have a, a yeah, link on up. our Facebook We'll have a link on our uh, Twitter, on our Twitter Instagram. All that stuff but this would, this would be huge for us. Charleston's got a great local uh, scene going scene, on. And if, if we could just kind of crack that scene and put it, put us on everybody's map, that would be awesome out of all you guys who listen to us. We can see the numbers week after week that there there is a nice group of you guys who, regardless of what's going on, give a shit what we're saying, which sure. is, is very pleasurable for yeah. us. And this 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 uh, podcast is going to be labeled Rookie Running Backs 1 through 6. So we know that this one's about to get more downloads than all the other ones. And what you guys need to be doing, all the all the newcomers and the people that just like to click on round one, you need to go click on the second part of round one and this in round two. That's where it really counts. Like but I don't listen, understand. I'm not clicking on the second part of round one because you guys didn't have Rashad Penny in the top six. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are dumb. Yeah. Add us about that. That'll be okay. Add us about that. But I mean, seriously, you gotta go check out the other, it's round two and three. That's where you make your money. But we got to do the round one for everyone's pleasure. We got to make a call. That was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode today. Um, hit us up on your platform of choice. Go check out YouTube for your pleasure. Vote, till vote, next time. Vote. Vote. Best Get of Charleston. Get your vote out. Till please, next time. Please, please, please. You've been listening to the FF Dynasties. Married to the game. Boom.